I already feel like a lot of y'all are not gonna be here for these wrecks today, but we're gonna do it because you know what? I love this trope and I know that there are some of you out there that also love it. You may just not wanna always say that you love it, but you love it. And that is step-sibling romances. I have eight step-sibling romances to go over with you today. Technically one of them, they're not actually step-siblings, they're adopted siblings, but we're including them in here anyways because they fall under that umbrella, I feel like so. I'm very excited to talk about these today. Of course, you know, I love all the taboo forbidden romances I can get and this trope just delivers. We don't need to drone on with an intro like I always do. Let's just go ahead and jump into these. So first up, I have one of the most wild books on this list and that is Sabotage by Chantelle Tessier. So this one I read earlier this year and this one follows Rayleigh and Colton. And Rayleigh and Colton, so I I can't remember who's, I think it's Rayleigh's mom and Colton's dad. I'm not 100% sure, but obviously their parents got married and they have like been at each other's throats pretty much much ever since their parents got married to each other like they just have a lot of beef they hate each other they go back and forth of like sabotaging each other like Colton will release pictures of Rayleigh I mean it's messed up but I mean what do you expect Rayleigh like destroys one of Colton's really really nice cars and they just really do whatever they can to get at each other and get under each other's skin meanwhile they are also hooking up with each other and so that dynamic of their relationship they have down packed but like the outside the like actual communicating respectful manner they're completely lacking like they don't know how to do that all they know how to do is hook up with each other and honestly I don't really even know what to say about the plot of this book because to be honest I don't really even know if there is one it's just them kind of getting back at each other and Rayleigh does have a boyfriend and Colton definitely sabotages her relationship with him and yeah that kind of becomes a bit of a storyline in here it's a fun time it's wild if you just want some like top tier you know I mean here's this for you because truly there's there's not much to this story in terms of like I don't know a lot of depth but it's fun so sabotage <laughs> there you go okay next up another one that I read this year is eyes on me by Sarah Kate this is the second book in the salacious players club series this one follows Garrett and Mia it is a standalone within the series so you don't have to read the first book in order to read this one you can read it as a complete standalone you'll just miss out on Charlie and Emerson which I do highly still recommend praise the first book but eyes on me is a step sibling age gap romance so when I forget they were definitely how old were they they were like kids more I think when their parents got married I think there's like a 10 year age gap ish between Garrett and Mia when they got married when they were younger Mia just always kind of like looked up to Garrett and like idolized him a little bit but Garrett was going through a lot of troubled things in his teen years and he just was not like around a lot and that kind of then grew him and Mia apart but in this book they are reconnecting they are going to their family's cabin or like some sort of property that they have away with their parents and seeing each other again for the first time in a long time and really starting to like reconnect a little bit Garrett's been really distracted working on his business ventures because he obviously is a part owner of the salacious players club and Mia has her own new job she is a college student and she works as a cam girl which Garrett does end up discovering one night he's on an app and he happens to come across Mia on there they begin talking and Garrett knows that it's Mia but Mia does not know that this dude that she's talking to on this app and that is paying her for some little private one-on-one -on -one time is her stepbrother this is definitely like hate to love kind of vibes like they definitely don't get along at all when they first start when they're back at this house back together again they have a lot of things in their past to work through and in present both individually and together to work through i love this one i do think the longer i sat on this one the more actually i think i like this one probably this is maybe my second favorite out of the whole salacious players club series I just I really like Garrett and Mia and the longer I sat on their relationship the more I'm like they just make sense and obviously because they're step siblings and like their parents are married they do have you know to like work through that when they let their parents know what's going on. This has one of the best groveling scenes ever at the end here where Garrett publicly apologizes to Mia. It's amazing and yeah really love this one a lot and especially since they're both like grown adults you know they're not like in the house under their par I mean technically they're like in the house together under their parents roof but it's like a cabin you know they're both like established grown-ups it's not like in sabotage where they're like both you know still like I think they're like 18 in that one you know they're still like more under their like parents supervision a little bit well not really not really 
Y you know what I'm trying to say. Okay, so this next one is also the second book in the series and also one of the oldest ones and I think the only traditionally published one on this list. However, y'all know I'm going to use any excuse to include Penelope Douglas, my favorite author, in a video and rival the second book in the Fall Away series. Love to see it. So this one follows Maddox and Fallon and you don't have to read Bully in order to read this one but I would suggest it, but it's not necessary. So Maddox and Fallon, they are both in high school and their parents got married when they were like, what? Oh, were they like maybe 15 or 16? They got married and then some things happened. Fallon got sent away. She went off to like a boarding school or something. And then now it's senior year. They're both 18 and she's back and it's their romance then. But there's a lot of resentment, I think, on like Maddox's part that Fallon left him. Like she, he sees it as like she left him where that's not the case. And you find that out as you go throughout the story. And it's also kind of cool because like Fallon's dad is like in the Irish mafia kind of. So it's not really like a mafia present in this book. But you definitely do still get some scenes between the two of them talking that is just funny. Fallon's mom married Maddox's dad and that, like the parents in the story, it's like a whole other deal. So you do get some of the parents background and what was the core issue that had Fallon leaving and then her coming back to Maddox and working that out. I can't say anything because that would spoil things, but you're just, you're in for like a really cool story underneath the like step sibling aspect of this book can get a little dark I mean I hate to use the word dark because it's like to me it's not necessarily I'll say like heavy I guess it does get heavy at certain parts of this definitely look up any triggers for this one but I really love it uh I will I don't think it's my favorite in the fall away series but it's definitely up there but yeah I just really love them having to overcome because Maddox is pissed that she like disappeared without a word and now two years later she just decides to like pop back in and try to like get things going again uh-uh-uh He's not having it and they really have to like work to trust each other again. It's so good. Love it. Okay, next is one that's technically cheating because it's adopted siblings, but it falls under the umbrella. So I'm going to include it. And that is Always Been You by QB Tyler. So this is a new release from earlier this year. So this one follows James and Gabrielle. If you've heard me talk about this book already, I'm sorry, but I'm never going to shut up about it because it's just one of my favorites. So Gabrielle, when she was two, she was adopted by the Callaway family and it was like a couple and then they already had two kids. James was one of them and he's 10 years older than her and they bring Gabrielle into the family and whatever they grow up Gabrielle has always just had like a crush on James just always like idolized him just always been like close to her big brother but then obviously when he goes off to school they kind of like drift apart a little bit kind of but then now she is a freshman at a university in New York I think it is and he is working in the city living there or whatever and they start reconnecting a lot more and they're just like they have a close relationship now he really kind of like watches out for her in the city she just always kind of looks to him to like help her out with stuff and just kind of be like there for her all the time and before they're heading home for Christmas with their families they just can't deny the attraction to each other anymore like it's been growing and growing and building and building especially when they're in the city alone together like away from all the rest of their family and they finally decide to just give in to the temptation and it goes from there. Love it. Thank you for giving in to the temptation because I enjoyed the journey of this. <laughs> One, this book is just so freaking hot. And two, I genuinely believed that these two were like soulmates. I believed the connection between the two of them. I believe that they loved each other on more than just like a physical level. Like obviously they thought the other was attractive, but I do think that like truly they fell in love with like who the core of the other one is. And it's just beautiful beautiful and when they go home for Christmas then obviously they're home with their family and they have to like be sneaky around them so that, that way they don't know that they're hooking up so good so good love this book so much highly 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 recommend okay where are we at here oh okay oh, love this one this one also has a rock star force proximity added on top of the step siblings and that is blame it on the tequila by fiona cole this is the second book in the blame it on the alcohol series however it is a standalone so you don't have to read book one to read book two it just follows three girlfriends and their dudes so this one is nova and parker's story you meet nova in book one and you kind of get like alluded to her a little bit but this is like her full story with her stepbrother parker so their parents married when they were younger and in in high school and they were like in a band together and they were really trying to like make it big you know she was a songwriter and I think she was singing for them or maybe was he just like singing whatever they were like in a band together something happens you find out about it later on in the story but something happens and 
Parker and the band end up leaving and Nova stays behind and then like a huge chasm just opens up in their relationship and they're like completely separate from each other now. So jump ahead to the future and present day. Parker's still on tour with his band. They're really successful. They're doing well. However, they are in a huge writing rut and Parker specifically, he like writes all their songs and he just cannot write any songs for the life of him. So his label is like, we need to bring in a songwriter for you to go on tour and like help keep you on track, help you write these songs. And without knowing the connection between between the two they hire Nova to come on tour and write for Parker's band and so that definitely makes them like reconnect so it's second chance as well forced proximity and they have it was like pretty heavy some of the stuff that they went through in the past like that uh Nova went through in the past and kind of a reason why she doesn't want to be like in the spotlight and such yeah that's kind of cool it turns into like a bit of like not thriller I guess like maybe a little more suspense-ish um but also it's hot just love this. Obviously, I love Fiona Cole so freaking much. And this book is just amazing. And I can't, are their parents divorced now? I can't remember if their parents are still married because I don't really remember the parent, like them telling the parents, you know, like a huge part of the step sibling romance is like when they have to tell the parents that like their kids are fucking. But I don't remember the parents in this one. So, and also because they're like literally full blown adults. They're like in their 20s, like late 20s, I think at this point. So like, I mean, kind of past the point of no return. There's a lot of other aspects in here that even if you don't really get much of the like parent explosion kind of interaction that you expect with step sibling romances, it's still worth it. It delivers in other ways. Okay, so this one, so like how Always Been You isn't technically like a step sibling, it's adopted siblings. This one technically cannot be classified as a romance because it does not end with a traditional happily ever, ever after, which it has to in order to be a romance. That's just like a thing. It's not like debatable. That's just like, it has to end in an ATA for it to be a romance and this one does not so this is technically like fiction with heavy 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 romance focused plot to it and that is underneath the sycamore tree by b celeste so this one follows Caden and Emery and their parents. So Emery's dad gets married to Caden's mother. Emery has always lived with her mom. She has a twin or she had a twin sister. Her twin sister passed away from I think did she have lupus as well? So her mom has just always, like her mom's just really struggled obviously with her twins passing. And she also has the same illness as her sister has, right? Yep, the same thing, the same autoimmune disease. I'm pretty sure it was lupus. And she's just seen the toll that it's taken on her mother. So she decides to go move in with her dad who she has never really had a relationship with before. But she's like, this would be a good thing for my mom to like get some separation away. So she goes to move in with her father and there she meets Kaden who is her stepbrother that she's, again, never really had much of an inter interaction with. And when she shows up, Caden is just like a very angry guy. He just, he's just unhappy about other things that happened in his life with his mom. He doesn't really get along with his mom, doesn't spend a lot of time with his stepdad. Like just, he, it's not like the picture perfect family that she's coming into, you know? And she shows up and immediately they're kind of at odds cause he just like doesn't want her there. But over time, you know, they start to like form a bond, form a connection. It's so beautiful. Like their love is truly, truly just so beautiful. Obviously get some tissues for this one. Like I said, it does not end in a happily ever after for the two of them, but oh, this story is just like so heartbreaking, but so freaking good. And because they're both, I think they're both seniors in high school. So obviously like they're both living under their parents' roof. So they have to be like sneaky about things as well. So like you get that aspect of the like step sibling, you know, dynamic of books typically you get them sneaking around so you get that in here. Okay, now let's go the complete opposite direction to a super, super dark romance. And that is Sicko by Amo Jones. So this one is technically, uh, I think they're foster siblings. I don't think they're technically step siblings. So again, it's kind of cheating, but also kind of not, you know, we're classifying it under the umbrella here. So this one follows Royce and Roy, I was gonna say Royce and Sicko. Royce and Sicko are the same person, but Royce and Jade. So this one starts back at the beginning when they are, when Jade is still in high school. And I think maybe Royce is like graduating high school or getting ready to go off to college, whatever, like a little bit older. There is a small age gap between them. I wanna say like four or five years or something like that. It just shows like how close they were. He kind of always watched out for her. They had like a pretty good bond between the two of them. Anyways, then something happens and Royce up and leaves, leaves Jade behind. And years later, he comes back and he does not go by Royce anymore. He answers to Sicko. He is the president of a motorcycle club now. And when he comes back, he's kind of expecting to just jump back into Jade's life. 
and or not like jump back into her life but he just expects Jade to still be the same girl that he left years ago but that is totally not the case Jade has like as much dark things as Royce has gone through Jade has gone through like worse things since then but she doesn't even know how to like tell people about it. it's very like hidden pain within her of things that are going on and Royce kind of like takes her back under his wing and tries to like help her out figure out what's going on but there is also still it's not like enemies to lovers but it's just like dislike to love like they have some things to get over there's some resentment built up between the two of them both of them kind of wish they could have been there for the other when they wouldn't and like get angry about that a little bit. Neither of them are anywhere close to the same person that they were when they separated years ago. And yeah, this one definitely has more of like a mystery plot to it as well. Um, and like a bit of a plot twist. I had guessed that early on, but it was nice to like see it confirmed and then still see the like payoff of it. It was great. Super dark though, super messed up. So definitely check any triggers before going into this. I liked their dynamic a lot. Uh, like resentment kind of that Jade had. Again, I mean, was it resentment? I guess it was more like she trusted him to protect her and he failed. And she, you know, is honest with him about that. Like, you let me down. Last but not least for this list is Lords of Pain by Samantha Rue and Angel Lawson. So this one is a dark step sibling, why choose college uh, romance between Story, Killian, Tristan, and Wrath. A Story's mom gets married to Tristan's dad, not Tristan, not Tristan, Killian, Killian's dad when they are younger. And there is an interaction that happens between Story and the three guys that is not like not good, not good. Story ends up running away and she goes off to a boarding school for a while. And the three guys are like, whatever, forget her. They go off to their school. They, they join this like frat. Story runs off and now it is like her second second year in college and she's on the run and she has to come back for reasons that you'll find out she's running away from some people and she's like who can truly protect me and that is going to be Killian Tristan and Wrath so she starts attending their university and every single year their frat gets to choose like a lady of uh, like the lords of Forsyth, they're the lords and they get to choose a lady one lady to live with them do whatever they want and she auditions to be their lady so she shows up and they're like when did you get back here? Where did you come from? Whatever. And they choose her and it goes from there. So she's living with them. It's forced proximity. Lots of dub con in this one. Like I said, it's definitely dark, definitely messed up. The dynamic between the three of them is messy and toxic, but it is a fun, wild time nonetheless. So yeah, that's it. That's the eight step sibling recommendations I have for you. If you have any, drop them down below for other folks to check out. On Friday, I'm gonna have, uh, I did a video back in April of all of the four and five star books that I had read up until that point, And I like completely forgot to do another one. I was gonna do them quarterly. I forgot. So I will be doing all of the four and five star books that I have read from like April to November to now. Uh, so yeah, that's going to be a long video. That's going to be a doozy. So tune in for that one. So anyways, that is it for today and I will see you when I see you.